So I'm going to define a class called node. And of course we're going to have a public interface, but we're also going to have in our private section. And again, I, you know, I, later on when we learn about template classes, uh, we'll, you'll be able to create nodes that can store any object. For right now, we're going to have to make a decision about what to store in our nodes. And for simplicity, I'm just going to store an integer. Okay? To make it a bit more generic, I'm going to call this integer a, an object. And then to make this a self-referential class, I need to declare a pointer to an object of the same class and for reasons I just described, its name is going to be called next pointer. So this is my node class. What is my public interface going to consist of? Well, it's pretty standard. I, I need a constructor, and I need set and get methods that will let me manipulate my private data members. So my constructor is going to take a new object, and I'm going to use a default argument of zero, just in case you know someone wants to use it as if it were a default constructor. Then I need a set object method, and it will take one parameter, which is an int object. Notice that I'm using the same name for my parameter and my private data member, and we'll use the this pointer. I need a get object method. And since it's not changing, the node object, I'm going to declare that as constant. Then I need a method to set my next pointer. And of course I'm passing in a pointer to a node called next pointer. And then finally, I need a get next pointer. It is going to return a pointer to a node. And it also will be constant. So that is the definition of a self-referential class. We're going to be able to store an integer in it, and we'll see examples. And, and we'll be able to construct these chains of these nodes into a linked structure, and, and we call that a linked list. So now let's look at the implementation of these methods. So let's look at the implementation of the node class. First thing we need to define is the constructor. Remember that in C++ the default parameter or default argument appears in the definition but not in the implementation. So what do we have to do here? Well, we are going to store the parameter object in the private data member object. And notice that we don't let someone pass in a pointer. I mean, if they can, if they want to set the next pointer, uh, they can use the, the method set next pointer. But the constructor here should ensure that next pointer points to null. And that's very, very critical. We don't need to use the next, the this pointer in this case, but we will go ahead and do that just for some parity here. Now, and we'll see examples a little later. When, when I call this method, or when I construct a node using this method, uh, if, if they don't pass in a parameter, 
then I'm going to get something that looks like this. Okay, I'm going to have object will be set to zero because of the default argument. And my next pointer will point to null because of this assignment. Now if someone passes in a parameter to the constructor, let's say 10, then I'll get something that looks like this. But as you'll see, it, it, once we start creating these change, it's critically, critically important to make sure that this pointer here points to null. These chains that we're going to construct have to be null terminated, as we say. So now let's look at the set object method. This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're simply setting the private data member object to the parameter object. And for get object, and you know, quirky C++, with the constant keyword, we have to include it in the definition and in the implementation. Don't forget that. And we're simply going to return object here. Then we're going to do the same thing for set next pointer. And we're going to set the private data member to the parameter. And this is really the main way that we're going to be able to construct these chains. By setting a value to this pointer, I can actually make the pointer of this object point to this object. And if I had another node object, I can set the next pointer to point to it, just like that. And I'll be able to make these chains of objects. And then finally, the um, whoops, sorry. So we want this to return a pointer. It's a method of the node class. It's called get next pointer, and it's constant. And all we're going to do here is return next pointer. So with a little bit of uh, mess here, here is the implementation of the node class.